viewers across the country and all over the world, this is Beyond Governance, the program that looks at the political happenings around the globe. I'm Colin Sonyoni, Nairobi, and first look at our major headlines today. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abi Ahmed has announced a political reshuffle that will see women ministers making up a record 50% of the new cabinet. The new appointment sees Aisha Mohammed as the first ever woman defense minister in Ethiopia's history. Former British Prime Minister Gordon Brown believes there will be a second Brexit referendum. The former Labour Prime Minister says there are many unresolved long-term questions on Brexit deal. This remark comes a day after the resignation of a government minister, George Johnson, who also called for a fresh public vote on any deal Theresa May strikes with Brussels. And lastly, the youth in the United States are approaching the 2018 midterm elections with the resolve to change the American political landscape through peer-to-peer -peer action. A new report indicates a huge increase in youth participation in the entire process, with universities playing a crucial role in reaching out to the young population age group. Youth involvement in the United States election shapes our discussion of the day. How crucial are the youth in any democratic space? What is the role of any youth in the election process? Are they guided by policies? Are they guided by tribal affiliation? Are they guided by bribe when electing leaders on the ballot? I have a youthful panel on the show today. We're going to find out in a while. Go. It is often said that the youth are the future of the nation. For a very long time, youth have been told they are the future of the country. In Kenya, for example, the youthful voters comprise of half the total registered voters. This simply means the crucial decision of choosing good leaders lies with the youth. They are the definitive factor in any election. They also have social media to their advantage. It is pretty obvious they are connected and can easily influence each other. The question is, have the youth played this to their advantage and elected leaders with integrity? What informs their decisions at the ballot? Shit. Remember, you can also share the discussion by tweeting us at Beyond Governance using the hashtag, the voice of the youth. And now let's take a listen at the opinions of Kenyans on what particularly informs the decisions of the ballot. Chagua kiongozi wangu kwa sababu ya maendeleo anayafanya ama nimeona nimeona baadhi ya vitu anafanya nikosa nikamchagua kiongozi wangu kama mimi mpiga kura na jitokezanga si tunaenda kupiga kura sababu ni ya ukabila ama anapiga kura kwa sababu ni mtu ambaye na najua ni mtu wa nyumbani ama uko mimi naendanga kupiga kura kwa sababu na nimeamini huo mtu kulingana na sera zake ni mtu anaenda kusaidia wa Kenya na ni mtu ambaye anaenda kusaidia hii nchi yetu Mi governor angu wa kituja, na kujanga na lugha tamu sana. Anatuambia tumpatia kura kwa wingi. Tukisha mpatia kura, atatuletea kazi maendeleo. Akisha afika huko, tuangojia mwezi wa kwanza, wapidi, watatu, akuji. Waga si tunashindu angu wa umutu tukisha mpatia kazi. Anaenda, anakaa huko, anapotelea, ayo ni kushiba tu. Sisi atukumbuki. Haa, atunanga noma, si tunayandalanga tu na, na mjengo yetu. Wanamaliza miaka tano tena ndio hawa. Wanakuja na tudanganya na pesa, tumezoea. Wanakujanga tu. Wanatulambisha ndogo ndogo, wanatudanganya mambo. Oo, oh, itakuwa hivi, watatuletea kazi, mamiradi. Alafu tu wakisha apata wanae, eh? wanaenda. Kwa Kenya wengi wanapenda kupiga kura sababu, and now allow me to bring in our correspondent Tabitha Njeri. Tabitha, uh, can you tell us what Kenyans are saying and particularly the youth on what informs their decision at the ballot? Tabitha? Yes, indeed, Collins. The opinions you have gathered show that some Kenyans vote along the tribal lines, while others vote because of the money they get from their leaders, and others it's because they agree on policies of a particular leader and this represents majority of kenyans back to you colleagues all right thank you so much tabitha thank you so much 
So allow me to introduce my panel today. I have Mr. Zakiel Muraidi. Mr. Zakiel Muraidi is a youth governor, Kiambu County. I also have Jacob Rotich. Jacob Rotich is a political science student at Daystar University. And lastly, I have Mr. Bazenge Arnold Endovo. Uh, Mr. Endovo is, of course, a law student and a political commentator. So let me start with you, Mr. Zekiel. Of course, you are a youth governor, Kiambu County. You have interacted with the youth. In your assessment, what is what, what in your opinion, what influences our decisions as Kenyans and particularly the youth when it comes to electing leaders at the ballot? That's okay. Uh, thank you, Bonacoris, for having me. I want to start by saying that I personally am very disappointed that uh, indeed Kenyans we are still voting based on ethnic crimes, we are still vote, voting based on uh, what our readers, political readers, are telling us to vote on. But we have not yet matured up to a point where we can vote based on agendas. Because as the youth governor for Kiambu, I have actually observed if you ask a youth, what are you going to vote based on? And the first thing they tell you is that mutuetu, mutu nyumbani. So what this means is that we are yet to decide what issues matters best to Kenyan people, what issues matters best to the youth, what issues matters best to the women. We are voting based on my name, your name, your code Corey, some code Ezekiel, wherever you come from, that is that is that is a voting pattern. That you cannot elect a person from maybe Western because you come from Central Kenya, and maybe you cannot elect a person from Nyanza Cypre because you come from Rift Valley. But these are the issues we need as Kenyans to eradicate. Because once we start voting based on uh, ethnic crimes, we are not going to make any progress in our country. No. And if you look at more mature democracy, maybe like the US, maybe like France and others, they vote, they, they vote based on issues, agendas. What can you bring me? And when you tell me that you're going to bring me development like infrastructure, that is what should determine that if I'm going to vote for you or not. But the sad state of affairs in Kenya, that instead of looking for those aspects, those development aspects, we look for who are you related to? Who is, who is who, who, who can you identify? At the moment we do that, it means that our country is going to remain behind. So Corys are very disappointed that we are not making any much progress. We need to change our thinking when it comes to voting patterns. And the moment we decide to vote based on issues, real agendas, what can you bring me, you can offer to make my life better, that is the only time Kenya will go wild. But in, in the moment, we are still yet driving behind. So allow me to bring in Jacob Rotich. Jacob, of course, I understand you're a young leader with big aspirations as far as leadership of this country is concerned. Are you satisfied with um, how we Kenyans elect our leaders at the ballot, some of the factors that influence our decisions at the ballot, or should we be worried, and particularly someone like you who wants to venture into active politics in the near future? Thank you, Collins, for having me. And uh, I would like to really say that uh, I'm worried with how Kenyans uh, we are we are voting currently. We we, we, we are not voting on on a democratic space as it's supposed to be to be done. But what what we are doing is actually uh, 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 tribalism. We are voting because of uh, tribal lines. We are voting someone because of uh, of of where we come from of uh, friendship or uh, political loyalties we, 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 we have in place. And that is very wrong. We should be worried as young, as young leaders because uh, we, 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 should, we should have leaders who are competent and not uh, chronism of, uh, of uh, political friendship and loyalties. Uh, people should uh, elect leaders to public uh, and private uh, departments, not because of uh, where you come from, but because of merit and uh, competencies. We should have young leaders who are going to roll this country and uh, uh, address major problems that are affecting th this country in terms of, uh, for example, corruption and uh, tribalism. Tribalism should be, should be a thing of the past in when, when we are going to, to have young leaders in the, in, the, in, the, in the government. We should actually, as young leaders, we should uh, borrow a leaf from, uh, from uh, good examples for example, we have uh, Muhairi Black, uh, who was uh, just 20 years and elected a member of parliament in the United Kingdom. So we should, we should have such kind of leaders. Uh, on the second thing I would love to say is that uh, we, we, we shouldn't be worried because of, uh, of, of 
where we are going and where the, we've come from. From the advent of uh, the 2010 constitution, I believe that in the next future we will have competent leaders who are, who are, who are, who are competent and uh, who have leadership merits, not because of where, we, where they come from. We have vibrant uh, young leaders who are ready to take this country to the next level. And uh, that is what we should expect as a, as a country. We shouldn't be worried uh, of uh, political uh, uh, affiliations and loyalties, but we should be, we should be focused as a country and uh, ready to work with everyone, not uh, uh, start lining where you come from or where you, 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 or who you are or which affiliation, political affiliation or loyalties you have. Thank you. So let me come to you, Mr. Bazenge. Do you agree with what uh, Rotich and uh, Mr. Muradi are saying, or you have a different school of thought? Uh, thank you, Collins. Uh, for me, um, I have assessed at least uh, election from 2002 uh, up to 2017. What I can say, um, there is a pattern that you can realize. Apart from 2002, which it was a little bit not uh, more of uh, tribal because it was um, a generation shift uh, where people thought uh, we needed to deal with Kanu. But if you look uh, the whole time, people vote based on tribe. Every time you realize that uh, Uhuru will go to Western and will have a lot of people during the campaigns, uh, vice versa, Raila will do that. Those are our top most uh, politicians. But when the voting comes, you realize people go back and vote uh, for their tribal king. So um, we, ha we have not grown out of that to say that we are issue-based. Of course, issues are discussed, but we are still far from it. And therefore, we still have some mentality that when I vote for my person, which is from my tribe, then I'm better off. But yes, we have seen that doesn't work out. So, but voting is still based on... Uh, tribal lines. So to finish us off, uh, Mr. Ezekiel, what then should we do? What is the solution so that in future people, and particularly the youth, uh, vote based on issues and, and, and policies? You know, I remember calling that Mze um, Moi once said that Kanu is going to rule Kenya for more than a hundred years. But I want to start from there. That is the kind of mediocrity that we need to sweep if we need our political system to change. Because you need to do away with the old system for you to bring in the new system. So when you say that the political uh, um, ideology that was there since 1940, 1960, is the same mentality that you want our country to be with when we are still in 2022, 2020. We need to change that kind of thinking. Therefore, my first answer to whether and what can we do for readers to be erected on merits is we do away with the mediocrity that has been in this country for a long time. Sweep the carpet cream. I wish we can have all those political uh, readers in those offices, all of them sent home, because there are many like us. There are many revolutionaries like us who need and who have ideas of how we can improve Kenya. But are we given the space? No. And, and I want to give you an example of uh, as, as the youth governor for Kiambu. It hasn't been easy because you are met with, with a lot of resistance. Why? Because the old, the old ideology is still wanting to be part and parcel of Kenya of today. But let me tell you something. If you want to change, change must be radical. And as Kenyans, we need to wake up to that reality. That we cannot be asking for changes, yet we are still remaining doing the same same things we used to do in the 90s. So, um, I wish the Kenyan generation, the young people, because we are the many, we are many of us. Actually, I think 60% of Kenya is the young generation. Why can't you foreigners and the other person vote on merits? But not vote because of where you come from, not vote because you know a person. I wish, I wish we can do that. And Kenyans, we are very good at saying that we are going to vote based on merits, on ideas. But what happens on the election date, I don't know what happens. Because everybody has this, is very happy that, oh, this time we are going to make a change. When you go to that ballot paper, we are going to vote for a person who will bring change. 
But what happens is, the moment you go to that barrel paper, when it is you call it and the barrel paper, peke yake. Eventually you decide to go with that other person who you know is not going to bring any change. It reaches a point where you are just sad to yourself because you ask yourself, what happens? What goes wrong? Why can't this ideology we have that you won't change, why can't we bring that ideology to the ballot paper? Because it's only through the ballot paper that we are going to bring change. Otherwise, if we keep singing that we won't change, we won't change, but during the election time, we vote the same, same old people, then it is us to break. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. I think we'll have to leave it at that particular point. Thank you. Indeed, it is clear that party affiliation, tribe, bribe, tribalism, among others, have played a significant role in shaping how Kenyans, and particularly the youth, vote. But all is not lost. The youth have an opportunity to set a whole new trend on how leaders should be elected. Leaders should be elected based on policies, they should be elected based on agenda, and not tribe, not political affiliation, not party affiliation, and the rest. And that is my take. Remember, the discussion goes on at Beyond Governance using the hashtag, the voice of the youth. Remember to stay connected, subscribe on our YouTube channel. I'm Colin Swanyoni Nairobi. Bye-bye.